Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Halloween and welcome to this lecture on the Mexican-American War. Now, we can't start this lecture without talking, talking about Texas independence for a minute. Uh, Mexico had gained their independence from Spain in 1821 and had offered uh, land in the um, very little settled Texas area to Americans. Uh, at first, 300 families to Moses Austin, Stephen F. Austin's dad, who will die shortly. They take him up on the offer. Stephen F. Austin will continue this. And by 1830, there will be 7,000 Americans in Texas. This will alarm Mexico. And so they'll uh, basically stop allowing Americans to immigrate and also make land contracts invalid for those living there. They've also abolished slavery, and so those Americans in Texas will look for more autonomy. Now, Santa Ana will start moving his army to Texas uh, to kind of gain or regain control of this area. This will alarm the Americans in there. They'll declare their independence. We get this famous uh, Battle of the Alamo, which stalls Santa Ana's army long enough, and Sam Houston uh, will be able to capture Santa Ana, get him to accept Texas independence, which it will have, although there will be conflict between uh, Mexico and Texas for a while. United States, President Andrew Jackson, President Van Buren won't touch the issue. Now, when we get to President John Tyler, he will kind of have this idea to uh, keep his presidency alive. He, he has, wasn't that good a president, but he'll say, okay, let's bring in Texas. A letter will leak uh, from him to his Secretary of State, John C. Calhoun at the time, that he wants to bring Texas in uh, as a slave state. Southerners, interesting enough, would like to split Texas into a bunch of different states to boost representation, right? That's a big thing here. And so we get to the election of 1844. The presumed two candidates at the time were going to be Martin Van Buren again for the Democrats and... Uh, Henry Clay for the Whigs. They'll come together and both basically sign a letter that says, hey, we are not going to annex uh, Texas at this time because we're afraid of war with Mexico. They'll leave the issue of slavery uh, alone as kind of had become the tradition. And so when we get to the Democratic Convention, uh, Democratic Southerners are mad at Van Buren. And so they vote for this dark horse, James K. Polk, who'll be kind of the first dark horse. You could say Andrew Jackson was a dark, dark horse too, but James K. Polk even more. He is a Southerner. He does own plantations. He does own slaves. But the South will say yes, and the, to get the Northern Democrats behind this, they'll say, uh, Polk will say, hey, we'll take care of the dispute with about Oregon, and, and the statement will become 5440 or fight. Okay, meaning we want all the land um, all the way up to the 5440 line from Britain, or we're going to go to war with them. So that will attract northern Democrats. Now, we don't get that, right? We get the 49th parallel, which will make um, Democrats mad. But Polk keeps his promise. His other promise is to bring Texas in, and he has a real, real passion for gaining California, too, as he heads into. Uh, and so how is he going to get that? Okay, and so we have to think that, okay, we have Texas. Texas is going to become a state uh, as it comes into the Union. But Polk still sees California as the prize. And one of his first things he'll do is he'll try to negotiate um, with uh, Mexico to give him California, okay? And so he wants uh, $25 million for California and New Mexico. He'll also pay uh, for the American disputes over damage, uh, which equaled about $3 million. And so uh, he says, hey, the American government will take care of this, Mexico. You don't have to pay for this. This is, uh, Mexico sees this as a slap in the face. Uh, they don't agree to it. And so how is Pope going to give that? 
and he comes up to this disputed area uh, of where the border is for Texas. Now the Nocius River right here is where Mexico says the border is. The Rio Grande right here on the map is where America sits. So there's this area in between. And so what, interesting enough, Polk does is he orders uh, his general, Zachary Taylor, uh, to bring troops in this disputed area. And in April 25th, 1846, uh, Mexican troops crossed the Rio Grande and they killed 16 U.S. soldiers. This is used by Polk to get Congress to declare war. This is when we start seeing this huge dispute from the north and the south, okay? And so we see, um, we see northerners, Whigs, abolitionists totally against this. We get Lincoln, who is a young, young congressman at the time, uh, bringing up what he calls the spot resolution, where he wants uh, Polk to be able to show the exact spot where American blood was spilled. So this war is contested from the beginning. Okay, But Polk, remember, his prize was California. He wanted it, couldn't get it through negotiations, and no, now he has the perfect chance to go to war. And you have to understand, there is a huge outcry against this. Okay, one of the interesting things in, in California history that we need to talk about is the Bear Flag Revolt. Uh, when the war is going to start in May, there are uh, a few settlers uh, from America in California. They are outnumbered uh, by those from Mexico living there, however, not by much, and this continually will grow. Now, uh, as this war becomes more imminent. These uh, individuals in California uh, from America will become more worried that uh, Mexico might attack them um, uh, proactively uh, to make sure they don't rebel. And so they're worried. Also, there's a gentleman named John C. Fremont who is sent uh, to California. Many don't know if he's sent there uh, to kind of provoke war or not. But anyways, it will happen. He goes to a fort in the Sacramento uh, Valley area. Uh, this small group of settlers will then attack a fort in Sonoma. They will go and take a retired Mexican commander named Vallejo. Uh, they will arrest him, although he is for annexation of California, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, and so they'll have this uh, basically revolt. They'll create the California Republic where they'll put Fremont in charge. It'll last from June 1846 to July 1846 when the U.S. Navy uh, will come up the coast. Uh, they'll take over Monterey. Uh, by this time, the uh, Bear Flag Revolt will move to the Presidio in um, San Francisco, which was unarmed at the time. And so the Navy will come into Monterey. They'll then come up to San Francisco. And California's Republic will only last for a couple of weeks. And then it will become or declared part of the United States at this time. The end. California bear flag revolt, but this is how we get our bear on our flag. Okay, getting to the war rather quickly. It will not last very long. Okay, the war won't. Uh, we'll have basically uh, the invasion into Mexico, the southern invasion where most of the fighting will be. Uh, you have the uh, northern invasion into Santa Fe, as you can see on the map. Uh, but basically, we will invade Mexico. Most of our troops uh, will die uh, from disease. They will not die from battle. Um, again, this is why they say a stronger uh, army uh, winning. Uh, one of the biggest, biggest uh, legacies of this, it will train a lot, numerous generals for the Civil War, including Robert E. Lee, Tom, uh, Thomas Stonewall Jackson for the South. We'll get Grant, Meade, McKellen, and Sherman for the North. And so this is good uh, combat training, all on the same side here, for these men. Maybe more importantly, though, is the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. And with this, okay, we will gain California all the way up to uh, Oregon. We will gain New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada area. We'll gain all this. Basically, we will take half of Mexico with this purchase. 
we'll pay 15 million, assume those claims um, by the citizens uh, against Mexico that we would have taken earlier, about 3.25 million, and we'll take over this land. This will be our last big land grab. We'll get the Gadsden purchase uh, from Mexico, this kind of little area where you see it, where it kind of dips down on the map in the blue. And then also we'll get uh, Alaska. Uh, but other than that, our, our land grabs are almost done. But we need to understand that is this war just? Or was expansion was Polk wanted California at all costs? And after diplomatic negotiations, he couldn't get it. So we went to war. War did not last very long. However, we did invade a foreign country. And this is how we get California as we know it. See you in class next week.